God led you out here for a reason, I mean. It's not just for all because you felt like coming out and getting some sun. It's because God wants you to hear this, I mean. And the scriptures say God speaking to, to men once. The scriptures say God speaking to men, yea, once, yea, twice, yea, they perceive it not. We're trying to make you understand this so you can receive the kingdom. I'll read this. The book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. So, Charles, the Bible says do not procrastinate to turn to God because you're an older gentleman. Uh, older gentleman. I see the gray on your hands and stuff like that. You had a lot of years spent on this earth. You've never been taught these things. You've never been taught that you're an Israelite, that you got to keep God's commandments to get the kingdom of heaven. You've never, been taught, you've never been taught the Bible, the fundamentals of the Bible. So the Bible says what? Read that again. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. God said do not put it off from day to day because like I said, you never know when your day is going to come and you die. And we have to stand before God and you're going to tell him, well, the brothers told me, but you know, I thought I had more time. That's not going to be acceptable, you understand? You have right now to get right. Now read on. And put not off from day to day. Don't put it off from day to day. I said, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm not yet. Tomorrow come. They said, I'm going to do it next week. Next week come. You know, I mean, I might try it next week. Then eventually you forget about it. Read on. For suddenly. The Bible says suddenly at an instant, at a moment. Read on. Shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security. The Bible says wrath of God will come forth, right? And when you're secure, when you think you're in the comfort of your own bed, and on your couch watching TV, when you're secure, when you're safe and secure, secure, Thou shalt be destroyed. The Bible said, that's when I'm going to kill you. Because I gave you time to repent. You had an opportunity. And I'm going to kill you while you think everything is fine. You understand? But God doesn't want that for you. God wants you to repent and start keeping his commandments today. For example, did you know that keeping um, having a beard on your face was a commandment? Let's show you that. Let's show you that. Because what did they call us in slavery? You know what it is, right? You know what did they call us in slavery? Did they call us man or boy? Boy, right? And do boys grow beard? Men do, right? So in slavery, they purposely shaved off our beard to humiliate us. And that was part of our history. A man wearing a beard was a badge of honor. When we walked around, um, uh, what you call it, uh, bare face, that was a shame. We, even amongst us, the brothers that can't grow beard, we, mock, we, we make fun of them. They're not in sin, but they can't grow a beard. We make fun of them, I mean, because that's a, that's a sign of your, uh, your manhood, you understand? But read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. So again, like you said, we come out here to raise up the people. We're trying to show people these are the things, these are the small things we got to do to please our God to get back on top. And what I mean back on top, I'm not talking about flying in the sky with angels in a, an imaginary golden city. I'm talking about just as we can touch the ground day right now, how we can say this street is named after whoever. We're going to have cities and streets named after us, you know what I mean? We're going to have cities and streets named after us. Pay attention, don't get distracted, right? Read that. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So God said it is important for a man to have his beard not to shave it off. These are important things you must learn to receive the kingdom of heaven. Because if you don't, like I said, God will kill you over something as simple as not having a beard. Right. How we, we call it petty. God is that petty. He will do that because he said these are my laws. Y'all are my chosen people. This is how I want you to live. Not do your own thing, but this is how I want you to live. Like you have, you have children, right? They can't act any type of way inside your house. If they do, you put them out, right? When they become of age, right? Same thing our God did with us. We became of age, and he put us into slavery. You understand? So he wanted his men to grow beards. You know? Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Cuttings in your flesh is talking about tattoos. A lot of your brothers out here, we, some of us had them. The only thing different now is we don't get any more. You understand? But before, we didn't know that. So we got them, but now we understand. Don't get any more tattoos. But what, what in America, they promote that. That's like a culture today amongst blacks and Hispanics. Get tatted up from your neck down, you understand? But not knowing that's sin according to the Bible. And things like that will keep us from receiving the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to touch on what the kingdom of heaven is. Because I get I don't want you to walk away thinking that, okay, it's a fairy tale, it's a feel-good thing. No. Kingdom of heaven is you, Charles, ruling over ten cities. Do you know what it's like to rule over ten cities? I don't. I don't know what it's like to rule over a city. How to say, okay, I want the streets made like this. I want this to be going on this, at this time and this going on. I don't know how to do that. But God is going to teach us in that day once we're back on top, you understand? And when you rule over those 10 cities, you're going to be famous in those cities. You're going to be royalty in those cities, you understand? That's what we're trying to bring our people back to. Because give me, uh, give me Zechariah 13, verse 8. Because it's a reason why you're listening to this. Because this microphone is loud enough for everybody to hear. And everybody can come and listen in at once. But yet they're not doing so. And the Bible's going to explain why they're not, but you are. Read that. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. So let me ask you, what does that mean when it says, and all throughout the land, two-thirds shall be cut off and die? Let me see if you understand that. If you're not, that's fine, but let me see. 
So when it says two thirds should be cut off and die, right? Let's say you have this board, right? This board represents the blacks and Hispanics. Let's say you separate it into three pieces. Two pieces are gonna be destroyed while one piece is saved, you understand? That's how God, that's God describing to us saying, only a few of us were here to take the time to hear this word and actually do something and change. Do you want to change? I've already changed. I'm a Christian, man. No, 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 no. Christian, like you said. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, God, I'm a godly man. You know understood, man? understood. I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I don't, I don't, you know, I, I, my father was a pastor. You understood. know what I'm saying? I'm genuine. But what I'm trying to show you, give me John chapter 3, verse 3 real quick. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you why I gave that reaction. You understand? When you said you was a Christian, I gave a certain reaction. You could tell. You saw, you, you saw, you saw what happened. I'm going to show you why. Because this is what Christ said. John chapter 3. Book of John chapter 3 verse 3. Hello. Jesus answered and said unto him. This was a man. Christ was speaking to one on one, right? Like I'm speaking to you one on one. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Surely, surely, I'm saying unto you. Except a man be born again. Born again. Let me ask you. What does it mean, Charles, to be born again? Live it daily, right. not every now and then, but daily. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then you know you have to stay in the word. You have to read that word. You have to put, make that word a part of your everyday life. Correct. And the word, and like I said, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a side note. The reason why I ask you these questions is not to challenge you. Don't feel them the right. It's just to see where you're at and you understand it, and if I can help you increase, you understand. So you're correct. The worst, most important, the most important word you said was change. It's going to say that next. That's what it means to be born again. Right. Read it. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So unless we change our ways, we cannot see the kingdom of heaven. But it's not any type of way change. It's change to a specific thing. You know? Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? So exactly. So it means change your ways. So let's see if you want to change real quick. Just one small thing. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Because you see, we don't worship this. The same man that enslavers, the same man that shoot us down and says they're, they're not guilty for it. We don't worship that. Right. We worship a black messiah. Black messiah, a black god, a black king. That's what we honor, you understand? And God has a certain rules for us when we're discussing, when we're, when we're discussing his word. That's what he says. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Now the Bible says, this is the, this is the uh, biblical order. He said the head of every man, with every man, the example that every man should follow is Christ. You understand? You know? And the head of the woman is the man. 50-50. The, and the head of the woman is the man. Read that again. 50-50. And the head of the woman is the man. God said the head of the woman is the man. But here in America, they say equality. 50-50 and stuff like that, right? God says man's head is Christ. The woman's head is the man. Now watch this. Read on. And the head of Christ is God. So that's the order. God, Christ, Man, woman, that's the order, Charles. Now watch this next point. I want to see, you said change. I want to see if you want to apply this small thing. Every man praying or prophesying. Right now you're in the midst of prophecy. We're discussing the Bible, this is prophecy. So every man praying or prophesying, you know? Having his head covered. Having his what? His head covered. You know? Dishonoreth his head. Let me see if you, who, who is, who is the example that man's supposed to follow? We just read it. Say God. Say God. Okay, remember it was God, Christ. How you doing, brother? What's your name, sir? DJ. DJ. Hey, Charles. This is DJ. We're one nation of people. We're not. We're not supposed to act like strangers amongst each other, right? Ch DJ. This is Charles. We're one nation of people. We're trying to rebuild our people because right now we're at the bottom of society, and it's a reason why for right. I want to ask, ask Charles a question, but I'm gonna ask you the same question to see if you catch on. Read this real quick. Every. Every man, verse three, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Now it says the head of every man is Christ, right? That's the example that we're supposed to follow. Remember that, Charles? The head of every man is Christ. You know? And the head of the woman is the man. Now let me ask you, brother. What the Bible just say? Is the, is the woman is supposed to be 50 50 or the man supposed to lead the woman? We the head, right? But is that, a, is that so in America? No. Now it says woman equal rights and all that stuff like that. No. The Bible says the man is the head of the woman, right? You know? And the head of Christ is God. So that's the order. I want y'all to pitch it because it's a question I'm going to ask y'all next. I'm going to say it again. The head of Christ is God. Right. The head of man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the uh, man. So again, it's God, Christ, man, woman. Now let's see what the order is concerning the man. Read on. 
Every man praying or prophesying. Right now, y'all both, we're all in the midst of prophecy. We're reading the Bible. Every man praying or prophesying. Having his head covered. Having something on your head, read on. Dishonoreth his head. And who's our head again? Christ. Who's that again? So, why are you standing here listening? You said change, right? When we went out with John 3, you said change is the most important thing. This is the opportunity to show that you want to change, to show honor to Christ by taking off your head, by listening to this. Can you do that? All yeah, oh, praise, all oh, praise, all oh, praise, all oh, praise. All right, so understand, look, on the back of that fly, we have a phone number, a website, and an address, all right? Yeah. What is the nation? Yeah. 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 Nation is men leading by example. Family.